What's up guys, it's Ben Chez and welcome back to Dream Daddy! It's been a little bit since the last episode, but don't worry, we're still on our way to discovering our main Dream Daddy quest. In the last episode, we, uh, we realized that something has been going on with Amanda. It's kind of been like, she hasn't been really doing so hot, so we're actually going to find out what's been going on with her. So let's continue the story, shall we? Let's resume. I think I loaded the wrong save. Give me a second. I loaded the wrong save. There we go. That's the better. That's the one we need to do. <laughs> wrong one. Sorry, guys. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down to the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda is still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear faint sounds, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying, the crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed. Knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No! Nothing happened! Go away! It's okay. Alright, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Wow. I have no idea why she's so upset. She seems... She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also get the feeling if I tried to do anything else, she would just make her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things that she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy. And safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of little, very little sleep, I roll out of bed, make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she would be willing to talk about whatever was bothering her. Mm. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes in out of her room, makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a few frozen raffles into the toaster, slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <sighs> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes this, her still freezer-burned waffle out there before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Well, go okay? I haven't seen her act like this in such a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back on the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her, fe her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off the scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she, wouldn't, she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she stood in the middle of the street and screamed, and then I took her out for some ice cream, and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I started running around, started just rummaging around for ingredients. 
I hear Amanda walk into the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say I'm sorry about last night. I j I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Mm -hmm. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I'm hoping I could speak to you in a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it under the table. Hopefully, the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad? It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting some, somewhere around sad. And I had to start over, and... <laughs> That's so cute! I made her a cake! Dude, I'm such a good dad. I'm s I, I love it. I love how good of a dad I am. Makes me really proud. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is this whole thing? I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Uh. I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to a really fancy art school in California, right? Emma R... The best friend? Yeah. You got it! Wow! Proud of you! Huh. Anyways, ever since she got ex her acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P, and I just thought... It was all in my head for a while, but I found out that Rosie M and both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all want, went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night they were all they all told me that they were busy studying for the Cal, the Calc B A B final. Yikes. Mm. So another importance of the of information is uh God, this is embarrassing. I have a crush on Noah and uh that's a thing. What? Whoa! I had no idea. Definitely didn't know that, okay? You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about it, the party thing, because I didn't want to start drama, so I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then, one day, I invited everybody out to get nachos at the mall after not texting me back for like two hours. Even though none of them are ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all said they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Aww. So I get to the mall, anyway, and I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together, eating nachos without me! What? It gets better. I'm standing at, by the escalators, watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No! Yes, I know! So I stroll over there, and I'm like, hey! And Grace drops the nachos on her shirt because, of course, she does. She does, and Emma R is like, glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the, 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 the gossipy one. I know. Grace is the Grace is the one that nobody relies on, or I guess that's me now. But anyway. Nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is the most eloquent thing to say, but I'm very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add, which has further contributed to this 
any day that I, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them where they where they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And sorry, I know this is a lot of a lot. Are you still following? Uh a little confused, but I think I understand. I have no idea what's happening. What did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R said, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Emma, uh, Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word in a drossily long string of text messages. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, and I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Hmm. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on read, and then, wait, left me on read? What's that? Oh, like, when s she saw my message and didn't reply, and I know that because there are read receipts. I, I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because at least she's being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am about everybody else and stuff. And then, out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, How could you say that about me? And, I, and I'm like, Say what about you? And then she tells me Emma P sent the screenshot of everything I told to her in the group chat and that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshot, but I, that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's just all really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody drops me and half of my grade hates me and now I have no friends. Hmm. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I'm almost expected it from everybody else, but Aww. Emma R has been, th been there since Dad died and I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even mad at that she's dating Noah, I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remains of her cake. Okay, I take it back. Kind of mad that she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't it wasn't I enough? I just I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like I miss them, dad. And it looks so dejected. I can almost can't take what's possibly to say to help. Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sword tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who is approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, and I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of daddly, fatherly wisdom. Not all friendships last forever. Real friends don't do that. High school sucks. Honey, high school sucks. You make friends with people just because they're there. And when you're and you're still living in your hometown. There's plenty of small there's a plenty of small pool of people to choose from. But once you go to college, once you're out there in the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people and it's going to be easier for you to make friends with people who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. Look at me and Craig. And some of them only last a little while, and that's okay too. You're gonna make so many awesome new friends in, at art school. Ultimately, I think it says way more about the character than it does about yours. Because you're an amazing, you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, 
That's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat a whole cake? <laughs> yes, we did. We ate that whole cake. <laughs> well, good talk. Amanda gets up, go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Oh, I love you too, Dad. So, I'm such a good dad. God, I'm the oh, best. You got dad. Oh, boy. Here we go again. <laughs> so, here's our thing. We have two options here, guys. We can either continue to pursue Robert, because he continuously treats us like a piece of meat, and like we don't matter, or we can try going after a new dad. I, I can't help it, I need Robert! He's handsome, rugged, and he treats me like dirt, but I love it. Okay. You know what they say about third dates. They get pretty serious. Are you sure this is your dream, Daddy? I'm sure. Come to me, Robert. I want you to be a part of me. In more ways than one, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I haven't heard from Robert in a while. I guess that's a good thing, but... I can't help but kind of miss him. I'm about to go to sleep one night when I hear a knock on the door. Hello? Hey. I look behind me to make sure Amanda's not around. What do you want? Hi. <laughs> I think you know. He wants to treat us like street booty again. I'm not meat, Robert. I have feelings. I have wants and needs. I want this to grow. I don't want this to just be like, hey, let's connect the pipes. <sighs> yeah, okay. Give me five minutes. Robert winks at me. I swish some mouse wash, sew on a generous amount of deodorant, and put on some chapstick. <laughs> I'm gonna need them. <laughs> uh, gross! I know he's just gonna treat me like garbage, but you know what? The sex is really, really good, so I think I'm okay with that. Robert and I go back to his place. Why do I keep doing this to myself? <laughs> Why? And he kicks me out. First thing in the morning. Not sure what I expected anything different. I walk home with a heavy heart. I climb back into my own bed. Feeling more lonely than I have in a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so dirty. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. <laughs> I'm so much more than meat. We played we played connect the pipes and now I just feel worse. <sighs> Phew. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Be cool, Ben. Be cool. Amanda walks in the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Mm. Something's fishy. Rats. <laughs> you ask. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. The life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but... Even I'm no match for the power of the funding of the U.S. government. Ugh. Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, then they've got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Dad. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Seems to be our go-to spot. Father, it would be. It would fill my heart with glee. I lend a man. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where I present the lines covered under the tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but, ah, Dad, you. I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. 
No way! I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be a it would might be a nice to take the piece of home with you. A DVD box set of Long Haul Paul Paranormal Ice Ghost Rush Truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Todd the old pigskin around? Totally. I followed Amanda to the back door. Oh. <laughs> oh! What? You told me not to make a big deal, but it seems you've forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal of your accomplishments. So I consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here! Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that... Is a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake with the good with the good kind of crunchies in the middle. I I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, alright? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first Mac and cheese. Always mac and cheese. Ben! Brian, you made it! <laughs> ha! I don't pass up on a good mac. What do you think of the party? <laughs> it's not bad. Just not bad? Uh. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you! Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hey, Amanda's dad. Hey, Bryce daughter. <laughs> See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome. Tiny child who knows how to pay compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro. This is a real rager. Taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be a bit I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Hey. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye out for you on the fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Uh, Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Oh wow, he doesn't have to, uh, look at his kids. Hey little ones. Yellow. Hey ya. Thank you for all the ice cream cake. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Rare ate four pieces and ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel had four pieces. I wanted to pin on it because we look alike. You have your face. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang out soon, yeah? Hey. Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. <laughs> Looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see each other more at church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph, that'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Oh. The perfect general mac ratio. Better work, Ben. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda with her dream in school. I'm glad she's turned out toward the finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. <laughs> Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey. Congratulations on graduating. I know that you, you're going to do great things in art school. <laughs> Pew pew! <laughs> Thanks! Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold the power over me. Ah. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm gonna break away. I want the. <laughs> and uh, anything I want, there's nothing you can do about it. 
Are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Yeah. Nope. Oh. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... She'll fit into college just fine. Hey, Robert. Glad you could make it. Yep. Robert takes a sip of his drink. While, why is he holding... Why is he being so cold to me? Everything okay? Sure. Why won't you talk to me? I thought we... Had something. Come on, Ben. You know what this was. I... You were an object to me. The same way I thought I was an object to you. I figured we were the same on the same page here. At least for how we, you were acting. But I don't want to be in this if there are feelings involved. I got too much to deal with as it is. I'll catch you around. Oh. Hey, man. Matt! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of that talking banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Oh. What this splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. The party starts to wind down. I take a seat on the back porch. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten all their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. Wait, can I say I was inspired? So... I, uh... Also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going off, going to college and being so far away from you, but I would realize that everything you've done for me to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, Ben, if you cry again. You're the best dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyways, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time! Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear open the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's sus. Hmm? Kind of shocking. All the photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? So I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock them dead, kid. <laughs> Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Uh. Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff intentionally and unfortunately. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda and I wave bye to the party goaters as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly dip into the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Yeah. Hmm. I know that's maybe not what we were looking for, but these people care about you. <laughs> I love you, Dad. We will always have each other. You're right. It's going to be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story. And... I'd be nervous about it, but I know you're always going to be looking out for me the same way I'll always be looking out for you. <laughs> Team Chess! Team Chess. God, it's all emotional and stuff, dude. Oh, is that it? 
I think that's it. I think that might be it. Oh, wow. Well, if this is the end, I want to say that this has been this has been an experience, man. This has been a real this has been a real experience. And I I, I got to be honest, the fact that we were kind of looking for a for a fellow dad to to love us and be a part of us. I feel like doing it this way where we just kind of yeah, finding someone for us is important. Yes, that's true. But I think honestly like the main thing that it was was hey you're a dad you have a daughter she should be the most important thing for you right off the bat you can find love and you can do whatever you got to do but i think this way was probably like that's the way to do it that's the way to like that's the way to like set it all where it needs to go so for a, for a game that's clearly a dating sim and is just kind of out there and a little odd, it, it's fun, man. It's got a great story. And there's definitely... There's, a, there's definitely a larger aspect to this. Uh, there's different outcomes. There's different endings and everything like that. So I'm thinking the ending I got was just the dad ending. I think I just got, that's the ending I got. I'm not sure, but from what it seems like, yeah, that looks what it, what, like what I got, so. I'm really, I'm really happy the way this turned out. So, good job, everybody. Good job, Game Grumps. And, uh, you guys made, you guys, you guys made a pretty fun game. I'll, I'll give you that. And for this being, like, the first, like, dating sim that I played, pretty fun. Pretty fun. So, I guess that's it. That's that's our that's our story. It wasn't about us finding a lover. It's about us being the best dad we can. So, pretty happy the way this turned out. But I'll leave it up to you guys, since this is pretty much the end of our dad story. If you guys want to see me try and go after an actual dad to build a relationship with someone, let me know. Because I'm, I'm kind of curious. I think if anything, if I do anything, I might just do these on a live stream or something like that. But for now, that's going to do it for this episode of Dream Daddy. It's not necessarily the end of it, but for now, we'll call it here. And eventually we'll come back. And we'll just be the best darn dads we can and find the real true love of our of our dad our dream daddy so hopefully you guys enjoyed it I know I did and that's gonna do it so till then guys this was dream daddy I've been Ben Chez. I love all your faces I'll see you next time see you later